Hi, it's Alejandro for the Audio Brewers. And in this video, we're going to explore one of the demo tracks I've created using our newest library, Peace. I have created this demo using natively Dolby Atmos since I want to take advantage of the fact that the instrument was recorded in Ambisonics. So it's got all the three-dimensional properties that are required to fill your room with real acoustics. So I'm going to divide this video on the music side where I'm going to explore the library and the composition itself and then on the production side, which is where I'm going to explore how I mixed it and how I placed everything in my three-dimensional environment. So we have here a project that is composed exclusively of MIDI channels. I'm not using stems or samples or libraries or even effects that are not included in the library piece and whatever comes in Nuendo. So to organize my project, I have already created my Dolby Atmos mix, but I am sending my mix to a stereo output that is what I'm using to record this video because of course you cannot hear in Atmos because we're using YouTube, but I'm going to describe the close idea of how this sounds in an Atmos environment. So musically speaking, this track starts with a very slow cadence that it just repeats and grows over time. So the first track that we hear are the arcs. Okay, so let me just describe quickly what this track is all about. First of all, I'm using my long arcs, but I'm using only the body mix. I'm using the body mix because I feel that the body mix contains much less high information on the acoustic field. And I really wanted to fill the room with like a bassy kind of mid um, harmonic color. So what I did was just choose the body mix and then I used my reverb where I am completely damping the reverberations and I am completely cutting the highs of it. So if I lower the dry signal and I just play the reverberation, you can hear that it sounds pretty dark. And this is exactly what I wanted to do because if I leave the high cut close and the damp in 50, it's gonna contain way too much information in the highs because this instrument is, has a metallic body and so it has a lot of resonance in the mid-high area. Aside from this track, there is the expressive legato happening, which solo sounds like this. Okay, so for this patch, I'm using the expressive vibrato because I have my instrument being right in front of the audience like a solo kind of instrument, so I want it to be very, very expressive. Additionally, I'm using the audience mix because I really want it to be focused on the front. So while the mix mix contains like a general good for everything kind of color, the audience mix is a mix that I have created using one of the ambisonics that were placed far away from the instrument. So you can hear the instrument like really, really focused in front of you. So aside from that, again, I used my reverb, I damped it completely and I used the high cut completely because of the same reason. It's a metallic instrument. It contains a lot of information in the mid high part. And I really want it to just reverberate in the low and mid lows. So when I combine these two tracks, it will go like this. So 
So you have one instrument that is right in front of you, which is giving you all the solo information. And then you have another instrument, which is the arcs, which is just filling all my space all around me. I can feel the vibration of the strings coming through. It's pretty cool. As we arrive to the middle of the song, I have a couple of Sordino legatos just doing a harmony with the expressive legato. And alone, they sound like this. Okay, so these couple of tracks are pretty interesting because I'm using the helmet mix. You know, when my friends from Dust Bowl created these instruments, they made a couple of resonance boxes in the instrument. They made the body, which is like the bullet itself. It resonates, it's a metallic sound, uh, but it contains a lot of bass information. But then through the arm of the instrument, you have like a resonance box above you, which is a helmet. And, you know, from the helmet, thanks to some springs that they have made over there, the vibration of the instrument gets transmitted into like a secondary resonance box that we also sampled in Ambisonics. So you can really feel a big difference between the resonance box in the instrument and the resonance box above the instrument. Um, for these helmets, I rotated the instruments so that instead of them sounding like that, they have been inclined. So they are sounding like on my left and on my right. It's pretty interesting. In the mix part, I'm just going to explain how I did it. It sounds pretty nice because you have like the main instrument in front of you and then the other two instruments like uh, diagonally on your sides. It's pretty cool. Uh, finally, I forgot to mention, I again added a reverb here, damped and high cut completely so as to highlight the mids and the lows of the helmet mix. So here is when we enter the second part of our song, which is when the Sordino enters and the pizzicato and everything. So on our arcs track, we have the same cadences happening. And then you have the Sordino patch, which is just the Sordino sustains coming in to reinforce the harmony. So if we check the patch out, it goes like this. So you can hear that the Sordino patch is much, much more full on the low side. Again, we're using the body mix, which contains much more information in the mid lows and in the lows. And again, we're using a reverb that is just completely cranked on the dampness and in the high cut. And we're also adding a low shelf because it, there is way too much information in the bass. So we wanted just to, you know, tame it a little bit. So this Sordino, along with these arcs, they kind of feel all my frequency from lows to highs and they just feel the song pretty nice. So if we combine them, they sound like this. pretty nice. And additionally, we have added a pizzicato patch, which contains like some sort of like chords playing, you know, as the song progresses. But for this pizzicato patch, I have accompanied the pizzicato themselves with saltando and coleños because I really want the sustains to, you know, be full. Um, I have added my reverb again with dampness and high cut and low shelf. But also I have added a convolution reverb using one of the pair's input responses so that, you know, it just makes like 
a very, very long tail. And also I have compressed it because I, I'm not really interested in the attacks themselves, but I want just, you know, the like the, the plug strings just to, to last. So it, there is a lot of reverb in this patch happening. So if we hear them. So this is how it behaves, you know, there is like a long tail happening and everything. And finally, in the mixer, again, we use the body because we wanted, again, to have a lot of information in the bass and in the mid bottom area of our frequencies. So finally, we have a sul ponticello legato because we wanted, you know, there is so much information in the mid and in the low that we wanted something just to resonate on up there, you know. So for this patch, we used our sul ponticello legato. And it's a very, very thin kind of sound. I just wanted it to be like kind of on the background. I'm using the audience mix again because I want the instrument to be focused in front of me. And again, I'm using my reverb, damped and high cut. So the track itself sounds like this. I must say that in this instrument, the Sol Ponticello sounds absolutely gorgeous, you know, because there is a lot of resonance in the mid and in the highs. And, you know, the Sol Ponticello itself contains a lot of resonance in the mid and in the highs. So if you put that in a metallic box, it just sounds amazing. So everything together sounds a bit like this. And the final part of my song um, contains a couple more tracks. One of them will be the free dynamics, which is when we ask the musician to play each sustain, you know, just go crazy with the dynamics, go piano, go forte, just don't look at the director and just do whatever you want. So it's a nice patch if you want to feel like with a wavy dynamic, your music. So if we explore this patch, we can hear that I'm using the free dynamics. I'm using, again, the reverb completely damped and high cut. And I'm using the body resonance because, again, I want just, just to feel all around me, you know, like with the low uh, end information. So you can hear that there is a lot of rebowing, there is a lot of dynamics coming and going depending on the note. It's just a beautiful articulation overall. So this, I am combining it with my other two articulations. And not only am I doing that, but I have rotated this articulation so that it's behind me. By inverting this articulation, I have it a little bit towards my back. So that combined with the arcs and with the sordino and with the harmonics and everything, it just completely fills my room all around me. It's beautiful. We also have a harmonics track, which is completely amazing. You'll see why. So for this harmonics, I am using again my reverb, like the previous tracks, and I'm using a pass filter just to let the highs, the really highs pass and the lows completely cut. And I'm using the helmet mix, which is the mix that is above me. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just listening to all these high frequencies the harmonics have above my head. So while the song is happening all around me, above me, I have the harmonics just playing 
and rotating. You'll see in the mix part how they rotate. But, you know, this encapsulates all the music in like a box. I can feel embraced by the harmony and by the music. It's a really beautiful experience. So if we listen to the harmonics track, it sounds like this. So it's an amazing feeling because I can feel the harmonics above my head, you know, and then just leaving my, you know, the front and the back and the sides just like free for other things to happen. So when I mix that with the other tracks, it just sounds beautiful. And so finally, I have my Tremolo Legato track, which, as the title says, is a Tremolo Legato articulation happening just to, you know, give a last taste of this song to the listener before it ends like in a crescendo. So for this track, again, we're using the audience uh, mix because I want everything to be focused in front of me. And I am using, again, my reverb, which is damped and high cut. So if we listen to this track, it sounds like this. So this is a beautiful articulation because I'm using the polyphonic legato. So I'm using a couple of notes sounding, you know, and one of them is just going down like very fast, whereas the other one is just, just sticking a little bit more on the top side. So it's a nice harmony. So when the song ends, it goes like this. So it's beautiful to have, you know, like one instrument doing the legato in front of me, like my main instrument. The other um, tracks are just going, just filling my room with all this harmony, or with all this cadence, and then the harmonics, you know, on top of me rotating. So when it comes to the mix, as you can see here, there are no extra inserts. I'm not using any third-party plugins, any third-party libraries. The only thing I'm doing is just adding a little bit of EQ to my standard bed just to tame a little bit those mid frequencies. But I'm using the EQ that comes included in Nuendo. So really, this is just like a very clean mix. The first thing to see is that my instrument tracks, because they are quadraphonic, because they are in ambisonics, are using the AB decoder suite. So if I open, you see that the AB decoder is just receiving the ambisonic signal and just converting it to the width of whatever they are being sent. In this case, my bed is 712. If I press play... You can see that the output is already automatically being decoded. If we check on the tracks that give us harmonic information, like the chords and the pads and everything, Everything is being sent to my bed because I just want it to be locked, you know, in the background as a mattress that will just, just keep my music, you know, from just sinking harmonically. So yeah, this is why it's a bed. So I'm just sending them everything to my bed. They're static, they don't move. They simply just sound. The free dynamics track is being rotated so that the focus is in the back while the arcs and the sordino, the focus is in the front. So like that, I really am sure that the whole track is just filling my room on my sides, uh, in front of me, behind me and above me. Aside from the harmonic instruments, there is also my pizzicato track that is also going to my standard bed because the pizzicato are just giving like some chords that are again static. They're just giving me a little bit of um, harmonies that just keep me on the key of my song, so I don't really want them to move. And then here come the objects. First of all, I have my expressive legato, which is the main legato that sounds in the beginning of the track. This, because it's like my main instrument, I have assigned it to an object, which is 
my main legato object. I have assigned it to an object because even though this recording has happened three-dimensionally, I don't want the instrument to fill all my acoustic field, but I want to really, really focus it in front. I'm using the audience mix, which already focuses in the front, but I want to push that focus even further. So what I did with my object is just lower its width, its depth, and its height to the half. So it's like 50% smaller, and then I push it in front. So basically, this time, this legato, instead of just filling everything around me, is just being pushed so that it feels from where I'm sitting all the way to the front. The expressive legato shares object with the tremolo legato, which again, I want it to be in front, so they're both being sent to the same object. So basically, they're pretty much the same instrument. I just have it separated into tracks. And finally, the sul ponticello legato, which is the one that happens when the song is really going crescendo. Again, it shares the main legato object, so pretty much these three tracks are the same instrument, which is like focused in front of me. So for the sordino legatos, which are the legatos that I had told you about that we have recorded above, and then I push them to the sides, I have assigned one object for both of them, which will be this, the legato background. Just like my main legato, I have shrunk this object to have half the depth and half the height, but the width is still 100%. Because since I am just panning these instruments to my sides, I really want the width just to keep, you know, to, to be able to spread all the way to the left and to the right. So, because I have two instruments in this object, I have done the three-dimensional transformation using my AB decoder suite. So, as you can see here, um, the left is rotated diagonally to the left, the right is rotated diagonally to the right, and additionally, the left is rotated all the way to the left, and the right is rotated all the way to the right. So like that, in one object, I have two instruments that were supposed to be one instrument here, but instead, I have just put them like diagonally um, by my side. Finally, there are the harmonics, which is yet another object. I have created one object for the harmonics, so as you remember from before, the helmet was already above the musician. I had made the mix so that it sounds above the musician. But additionally, I have sent this to an object, which will be this one, which again, I, am, I have shrunk its height to half of it, and then I have pushed it all the way up. So while my main instrument is half the height, my harmonics start from half this height all the way to high up. So for this object, I am not using a 714 three-dimensional object, but instead a 514 because I'm not really interested in having all the, the sphere, you know, of, of sound. I just want, you know, just the eight corners that are like the four at my ear level and the other four above. Additionally, I have created an automation here that makes these harmonics rotate. So if I press play... You can see that the harmonics just rotate like very slowly, just to keep the listener, you know, aware of the fact that, you know, something is coming from above your head. And so this is the mix of our song. As you can see, it's a very simple mix. Um, as a final resource, what I did to just keep the loudness um, in check with whatever Dolby Atmos requires, which is negative 18, um, I created a VCA track so that I could link all my objects and my bed. Um, I did this because I was just trying to avoid using like compressors, limiters and everything because this is just a very simple track and I just went, wanted to keep all the dynamic range, you know, like untouched. So if you check on the ending a little bit with the render open. see all the objects, you know, like just moving around the spatial field. You can see the harmonics rotating above me. You can see the main um, instrument, you know, the main legato, and you can see the secondary legatos here wide. And finally, you know, you have the bed, which is something that is just sounding all around you. This is the real thing. This whole instrument has been recorded, mixed, and it is delivered in Ambisonics so that you can natively go to a Dolby Atmos mix and you don't have to fake, you know, 
uh, the position of each stem, you know, using like an impulse response or, or you know, like a, an emulator of a space. No, this is the real thing. You have a three-dimensional spheric uh, uh, acoustic recording that you can rotate. And depending on how you rotate it, the sound will behave exactly the way it would have behaved if you were present in the recording studio. If you're interested in this session, you can download it from the link below. You can open it, you can just mess with it, you can make it better, of course. Uh, but just mind that for opening this, you will need the piece Ambisonics uh, version so that it loads exactly as is. And you will need the AB decoder suite if you want to keep the settings as they are. If you don't have it, you can still use Nuendo's own decoder, but then you're going to have to um, route each of these tracks to an Ambisonics group track. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.